How to set a proxy in Jenkins. If you're running your Jenkins controller in an air-gapped environment, you might have the opportunity to use a proxy in order to be able to manage your plugins on your controller. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to configure your controller to use that proxy. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.440.1. In previous versions of Jenkins, the place to configure the proxy was over in the plugin section. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like today with this version. So we'll go to Manage Jenkins, Plugins, click on Advanced Settings, and what you would see is you would see a section within Advanced Settings to where you would configure the proxy. But now with this version and a few versions prior to this, the proxy configuration form was moved over to Configure System. So let's go ahead and click on this link. And if we scroll down in the Configure System page, we're going to be looking for HTTP proxy configuration. But we'll also notice that there's no form there, so let's go ahead and click on Setup, and then we'll see the form expanded, server port, username, password, no proxy host, and even an advance, which we'll take a look at in a few moments. Now, before we make these changes to our configuration, let's go back over to Plugins. You may have noticed when we were going through to take a look at where the form used to be, we saw this red toast at the bottom. So at this point, what we're not able to do is we're not able to connect to the update site, which is where the plugin information is stored. So let's take an even further step on this. Let's say we want to go ahead and install the Support Core plugin. So if I take a look for Support Core, let's go ahead and click on this checkbox. We'll go over to Install and Install After Restart. What we're going to see when this starts up is that we're going to get an error stating that we're not able to connect out to our update center. So we'll see there's two failures for both Metrics and Support Core. Metrics is a dependency for Support Core. So how do we set up our configuration for our proxy? Well, again, let's go ahead and go back over to Manage Jenkins. We'll go to System. Let's go ahead and go down to our HTTP proxy configuration. We'll click on Setup. Now, in my case, I've already set up a reverse proxy server. I'm actually using Squid. So in this case, my server name or my host name is Squid1. And the port I have set up running on that is 3128, which is the default port for Squid. Now, in my configuration, I have not set up a username or password. As a best practice, I would recommend using a username and password anytime you're accessing through your proxy. We could set up a no proxy host. And what this means is any host that should not go through the proxy. But in my case, I'm wanting everything to go through the proxy. All traffic going outbound from my controller should go through the proxy. So I'm going to leave that blank. Now, let's go and click on Advanced. We have a way to test our URL here. So let's go back and pull the Squid1 and 3128 out. And let's type in what the test URL is for our update center. Now, if you don't know what it is, let's go ahead and go back over to Manage Jenkins. Let's go to Plugins. And under Advanced Settings, the update site is listed right here. So let's go ahead and just grab our HTTPS Update Jenkins IO, just the domain name. And then let's go back over to Manage Jenkins. We'll go back to System. Let's go down to our test first. So we'll click on Setup. We'll go ahead and click on Advanced. In our test URL, we're putting in the URL to our update center, just the domain we don't need page yet. And let's click on Validate Proxy. What we'll see here is it failed to connect to that domain name. We can show the details. We can see it's the same error that we saw when we were trying to actually install the plugins. Now, let's go ahead and configure our proxy. So I'm going to say Squid1, and my port is 3128. I'm tabbing out all of those fields so they take and then let's go ahead and click on Validate Proxy one more time. Now we can see that we're getting back a success code of 200. So that means our controller is able to go through the proxy to go ahead and access the Update Center. So let's go ahead and click on Save. Let's go ahead and go back over to our plugins. We can still see that there were some errors checking the site. That's fine for now. We don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and go back over to Download Progress. What we'll see here is we have failures. Well, let's go ahead and go back over into our available plugins. I'm going to search again for Support Core. So we can select it. Let's go ahead and click on the Install After Restart. If we scroll down to the bottom, now we can see that we have a pending for both Metrics and Support Core. Now we can see that they were downloaded successfully and will be activated during the next boot. Let's go ahead and click on Restart and wait for our controller to restart and we can make sure that Support Core actually installed. Now that the controller is back up, let's go ahead and go check out our plugins. We'll go to Manage Jenkins, Plugins. And if we check out Available Plugins, we don't expect to see Support Core here, which we don't see it in the list. But if we go to Installed Plugins and search for Support Core, we can see that the Support Core plugin is now installed on the controller. So by going in, setting up the proxy, 
That allowed the controller to be able to access the internet, download the plugin, and do the installation of the plugin. So even if we're running in a air-gapped environment, we might have the opportunity to go ahead and use a proxy to be able to access and maintain our plugins, making our job as a Jenkins administrator that much easier. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.